All right. I want to figure out a way to get my PhoenixJS config to automatically resize windows to the exact size that you're looking at right now. This is the size of the ScreenFlow recordings that I do for now. So I need a way to quickly get windows into this size. For instance, if I go back to Chrome, see it's not, it's all, there we go. This window is the right size, but that's unusual. Resize. There we go. All right, so the question is, how can I get this library that I use to resize my windows to make my windows the right size? Let's check out the docs. And I'm just going to read through the docs here for a little while. I'm going to go through here and look at what I've done so far and try to get a sense of what the how best to tell a window that it needs to be have the pixel dimensions of 1920 by 1080. So it's 19 20 by 10 80 and that is width times height okay so this is what I want and what I have now is um, if I pull up a new window real quick just a new vim window I'll move it around a little bit. So what I have right now is a window that can move around the screen based on me hitting some command keys and the arrows. So if I go to the right, it shoots to the right, left, down, up, etc. And full screen, which you can't see all of, but it's there. So I'm doing a lot of calculations and I am resizing windows already. I, I don't imagine that it'll be that difficult to tell the front window to be an exact size. And the other thing to note is that I'm going to want it to be at a position 0, 0, or this corner up here after resizing as well, because this is where I do my screen recording right now. So let's see what we got. Okay, so I might be able to use move to, to say, I could call it twice, move to top, move to left, that should give me what I want. Let's, let's, let's start. Now I'll just copy this guy and move to, Try this. I want to move to top and move to left. Okay, so let's see if this works. What key can we give it? Command shift, which I usually hit with my left hand. So if I make it a key on the left side of the keyboard, I can do it with one hand. On the other hand, uh, that's probably not necessary since I usually have both hands on the keyboard. So what I usually try to do with key commands is try to make them somehow intuitive, which usually means intuitive in terms of Vim. So if I can, I use the HJKL keys to move in directions. They're basically the arrow keys, but they're all taken up by what you saw earlier, which is you move the window forward and back, and up and down. So what is a good key to use in this case? And ideally it's not one that's already mapped to something. It can be. Let's see. 
So I'm, I'm thinking Command Shift G, but let's see, go back. What does Command Shift G do? Find next. Okay, this is definitely something that I'm not going to need in Vim at least, but. Oh, so it's find previous. Shift Command G. Okay, so I'm not worried about this command getting overwritten, and Command Shift G doesn't. My fingers don't recognize it. There's no muscle memory there, so I suspect that it's not used, or I don't use it in any of the other apps that I use on a day to day basis either. So I'm going to go ahead and try Command Shift G. Get back to where I was. Get a G in there. I'm going to save it. Let's go. So this is off screen, but I'm going to reload the configuration. Reload. Okay, let's make a new screen. Let's. So I, I have a new screen here. If I hit Command Shift G, there is an exception. Where are the logs? <laughs> oh, you know what? I should just put some linting in here. What was win in this case? Move to left. In this case, win was screen. All of this fun stuff. Okay, so yeah, this seems little. Obvious in retrospect, but win was not defined. I've come to rely so heavily on linting that I just didn't even notice it right there. All right, that was so it works. If I have my window off in the corner and I hit uh, Command Shift G, it <laughs> looks like it does a quick jump, but it looks like it's doing what I want. Okay, so good. So far, so good. Resize real quick. Manually, now let's see if we can get it to be the size that I want. So move two is a nice helper we got there. What else do we have going on? Any other helpers or is it just move two? Frame dot height. Hmm, so it looks like I'm gonna have to use the set frame helper. That's what I'm seeing here. When I use screen. Oh, okay. So, hmm. I may not need. Maybe I won't actually need the screen. Okay, we got our wind, got our frame, moving the window, and frame. Maybe use it. Let's set size. Okay, so we're just taking measurements window. Hmm. What is the set size? Move to left, third half. Yes, yes, yes. So in this case, hmm. When that set size it seems to be the one. What is 
I'm just wondering what this set frame business is then. Hmm. Anyway, let's let's try a win dot set size. So win dot set size third want what is the width again? Um back here. So width is that height is that Let's semicolon save it. I'm gonna reload my config. Okay, config is reloaded. Let's new window, move it away. G, okay, so appears that G, G is working like full screen now. Why is that? Hmm, could be. So now what I'm guessing actually now is that uh, it's relative to the, the resolution, the stated resolution of the display and not the pixel resolution of the display. This, what I'm on right now is a retina display. And so if I say the, the actual pixel resolution is, I believe, uh, two, 2880 by 1800, which is double the, the stated resolution of 1440 by 900. So it's a very high resolution display, but it, it acts like the resolution is this. So if, it's, if that's the case, and I set width to 1920 and height to 1080, of course it's going to be full screen because that's more than the dimensions that it knows how to display. So do some math to figure out. So I think what I'm going for is, what I want is, we have 1920 by 1080, and we want relative to the pixel dimensions. So this is an absolute pixel dimension, and so is this, and so this is a scaled pixel dimension, and I, so let's go with this, save it. Go over here and reload. Reloaded, all right, new window to try it out. Boom, love it. This is exactly what we're going for. Let's maybe pull out a browser window. Well, it is, so it's full size. And then we decide we want it to be over here, great. Yeah. So, excellent. This is exactly what we want. So I'm going to leave, leave a comment for myself, reminding myself what this was, and then I'll save it, ship it, and we'll be good to go. There you have it. I'm actually going to use this real quick to bring. There we go. Bring my terminal on the screen. 
resize it again. So let's go to what do we have that's changed in the bin directory? Scanning through. Okay, so I have my comment. I should remove that comment. And then what else? What else has changed? Vimrc. What did I add in my Vimrc? Okay, it looks like I was adding something related to previewing markdown files, which is, of course, unrelated. And so what's left is the Phoenix config. I actually want to remove my pseudocode. Close that out. Oh, so there's the only diff right there. If I was to make this full screen, run it again, and it'll bring the screen over. So looks something like this when you're running a IC diff in the full screen. It's pretty nice, pretty easy to read. Uh, easier in my opinion than the standard git diff output. Okay, bring it back to a normal size. Amend that because I like to add a little more context to these things. Okay. It's pushed on up. Oh no. So I'm gonna looks like I have some. Let's do a fetch. Status. So G is alias to get status in my terminal, which is why you'll see me typing things like G, and it actually does something. Let's go on and get status. Great. So two and one different commits. So I just need to do a git pull, and I could have it merge in. But since no one else commits to my dot files other than me, I like to uh, rebase all over the place which we can do easily enough with git pull rebase. Cool, so do a git lg. Well, let's just do a git log since everyone's familiar with that. Add screencasting, update. So the, this was the commit, swap tilde in backtick and finder. That was the commit that uh, was up on origin but was not in my local master branch. All right, push on up. There we go. We are done. And that worked out quite well.